Hello everyone, welcome back. This first episode will be credential dumping by Registry Hive. Now, this is a form of credential access when you are attempting to get NTLM hashes of affected users. You might be able to use these hashes to crack them in order to get the plain text passwords, or you can use these NTLM hashes for a pass the hash or an overpass the hash attack, depending on how the directory is set up. These are the MITRE tactics we're going to be covering. And the scenario is as follows. Pretend we have a user that we have already fished and we already have plain text credentials for. We log into their host and it's just a normal Windows 10 workstation. And while they have local administrator access, they do not have very high privileges within the domain. So we're looking to see if there's any other users who have logged onto this machine who can provide us a little bit more access into the domain, a little bit more permissions, and gives us a little bit farther reach. Now, as we can see, we're still using Detection Lab. This is still set up in an Active Directory setup. We have our domain controller, our Windows Event Forwarder, and our Windows 10 machine. Right now we're on the Windows 10 machine under the user Test Admin. If we look on the device, we can see there's actually multiple users. We have Test Admin, the local administrator, test user, and a Vagrant account. Now, we don't know for sure which of these accounts has domain level access. We can check by just doing a common domain enumeration command by ourselves. And it looks like this user that we're using, just to verify, does not have domain privileges. This is a local account only which means we're not able to even do anything at the domain level. So we definitely need to pivot to another account. Now, technically this method can be performed using Mimikatz. However, I prefer to showcase it using direct interface with registry hives. This can be done either via CMD, PowerShell, or even the registry editor, whichever you prefer. We'll start by saving the three registry hives that we care about. These are all going to be located in HKLM, the HKey local machine. So we'll start with HKLM SAM, and we'll save that to the local directory. We can see that on the desktop there. We'll do the system. And we'll do the security key. Perfect. Now that we have these three registry hives, we can use these three registry hives on Kali in order to get NTLM hashes using Impacket. Impacket is a bundle of security tools often used for a very wide variety of purposes, but for now we're just going to use Impacket's Secrets Dump and Impacket's SMB server for data exfiltration. Now if we pull up our handy dandy WSL, we can actually start a SMB server using our Impacket toolkit supporting SMB2 under our current directory with the username of Kali and the password of Kelly. Very secure, I know. That is started. And we can connect to our share right there. From here, we can begin exfiltrating data. So we can copy. Let's see, we'll copy our SAM file first. Why not? We'll copy it right there. That is copied. We'll do the same for our other two registry hives. So 
All right, and we have copied three of our registry hives over to our network share on Kali. Now, if we look at this on Kali, and I should be able to pull this up, we have our three registry hives. Let me see if I can pull this up real quick. And we can use impacket secret stump using our sam.save file, our security.save file, and our system.save file, and push that to local. Now we can see all of the local SAM hashes, LSA secrets. Sometimes it gives you a little bit more information. A lot of this output is very similar to Mimikatz secret stump. But what we care about particularly is this section right here. These are the usernames and RIDs, LM hash, and NT LM hash. It's also formatted right here just for memory. Now, we don't necessarily care about the local machine hash, but we do care about the NTLM hash, which essentially is just an MD5, is another way of thinking of it. Now, I went ahead and made this a little bit quicker by copying all of these NTLM hashes, these sections right here. getting rid of duplicates into our hashes file. Just a little bit cleaner. So if we use, personally I prefer hashcat, we can get the plain text passwords, ideally, of our hashes for our users. And I already did it, so we can just do show. So we can see for the first account, and hint, I already know this is the Vagrant account. The password is Vagrant. The test admin user has a password of password123. And the test user account has a password of 123 I love you. Now that we know these users' passwords, we can simply remote desktop into whatever accounts or hosts that they're allowed to join into. Or if they're simple local accounts, we can simply ignore them, just like this low level unprivileged account, as well as the account we already have access to, the test admin. Moving on to our detection, we will wipe our slate clean just with a quick delete and then re-perform the registry key hive saves just real quick. So we'll do sim. There we go. System. And security. Perfect. All right. Now that we've got those back up. We can pull back up our Splunk instance. And let's just keep our index generic. We'll do any index and we'll just search for what we know is there. We'll search for sam.save. We'll search for our friend Sam. All right. We've got one event, and we can start adding limiters onto this before we run it up. We can put some restraints on it before we just blast and search everything. Now, the first step that we usually want to do is trying to find out what event log or what source we want to pull from. In this case, we'll use our source type of Windows event log just to make sure. There we go. Or actually, I should do this. There we go. And we want to make sure we're limiting it to just whenever registry gets called. We don't want just whenever a random file is occurring on anything. Now, if we look even further down, we can see that in this case, we have CMD spawning reg. And the best way for us to find out 
when a child process is spawned or pull whenever child processes are spawned from event logs is actually by event code, in this case 4688. Now, 4688 is an event ID for a new process has been created. Fairly simple. Just think of it like whenever a new process gets spawned. Something spawns something else. Process A crawls process B. We can add that to our search. And we want to make sure that we're limiting this to only whenever reg gets called. So we can add process path, or actually let's do let's do new process name. Let's add that. Now, as it stands right now, we're pulling from the Windows event log, specifically looking for sam.save. Anytime reg under this specific directory is spawned by something else. Now, because this exploit already requires local administrator privileges, they can technically move this reg.exe to anywhere on the host that they like. They can rename it to bobby.exe if they want. However, there's a little bit too much variation for that, so for now, let's just say any location for reg. We should still be able to find this. Perfect. So even if they move it onto the desktop, we're still going to catch it. Now, how we can catch this behavior is primarily by the command line in this case. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Regardless of what they call reg, we're already saying, hey, as long as reg is spawned by the new process name, which we would have to account for, hey, anytime they change the name of reg, but that's getting a little bit too much into it, and we know they're going to have to execute the save command. That's how you export registry hives to begin with. We also know that we're only really caring about HKLM SAM, security, and system keys. And they can name the exported file whatever they want. They can name it a.exe, b.exe, c.exe, whatever. We won't really necessarily care. So we can take off our SAM by Sam, and we can put on our regex. Now this regex is saying, hey, anything followed by a save command, followed by potentially any amount of spaces, anything like that, HKLM, any character, Sam, system, or security hives and anything following that. This should allow us to see all three of our registry exports. So we have all three right here. And as it stands, this actually captures a good, I'd say 70%, maybe 80% of it. A small little tweak we can do to cover for one bit of obfuscation is expecting an attacker to use buffers or something like this in order to break it up. We see that it correctly follows right here, and this little bit of simple obfuscation will help break up this command line. So anytime we're looking for just a string that says save, this will not catch. As we can see, rerunning this query. Now we can fix this just by saying, hey, optional characters in between these. Who cares, right? And you can technically do it for all of these, but that's getting a little bit too nasty. And we'll keep this at just 80% ready for now. But we can see from this process command line, we've captured this little bit of obfuscation here. Now, technically, you can perform the same MTLM hash dump via Mimikatz. However, I wanted to demonstrate specifically how to do it through registry hives because it uses all native tools in Windows, and you don't have to worry about any antivirus detections popping up on Mimikatz. I hope you learned something.
and please join me again next time. Thank you.